In this lesson, we're going to create the buttons for the arcade cabinet. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about creating the buttons for this arcade cabinet. We're going to be creating these buttons out of geometry primitives. So to create a geometry primitive, we would need to go to the Create tab. Under the Create tab, you'll see Geometry, and then you'll notice that we have standard primitives on by default. This is where we'll usually stay whenever we're creating primitives. Some of the most commonly used primitives that you'll create are going to be a box, a sphere, and a cylinder. In our case, we're going to be using a cylinder as that matches closely to the shape that we want for our buttons. So to get started with this, all we need to do is simply activate cylinder, and we need to turn on auto grid. Now the reason that I want to turn auto grid on is because it allows us to create geometry on uh, surfaces of our models. So with this set, let's simply left click and drag out the base of that cylinder. Get it to a good um, size there that you feel comfortable with and then release that left mouse button. Now notice whenever you drag the mouse now it's going to give you a height on your cylinder. Now you'll notice that it's continuing to go up and down with my mouse. Let's go ahead and bring it down to right about here or so and simply left click. What that will do is finalize that height and then finalize your cylinder. Now some other um, uh, standard primitives will work in this exact same way. So for example, a box. If you left click and drag out the base of the box and then you release the left mouse button and drag up, that will give you your height. Left click again to stop that once you're finalizing that height and you'll have your box. Now you have some other primitives that work a little bit differently. We have the sphere all you have to do with this one is simply left click and drag. Now you also have a cone which you need to left click and drag out the base, release the left mouse button, drag your mouse up to the desired height, left click one more time, that will finalize the height but then you need to finalize the point on that cone. Then you'll left click and that will finalize the entire cone process. Now once you are finished creating primitives, you'll need to right click to deactivate that current selection. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and select our cone and hit delete on the keyboard. Do the same thing for your sphere as well as your box. Go ahead and select your cylinder and let's go to the modify ta uh, panel. Now in the modify panel, you'll notice that we have the modifier stack and this object is a cylinder. You'll see the parameters that we have for this standard primitive. We have the radius, which I want to go ahead and just type in 1.5 and then hit enter. And then I also have the height. I'm going to type in 0.5 here. We have our height segments, cap segments, and sides. Now whenever we are creating standard geometry like this, uh, normally we want to stay with a lower polygon count as it's much easier to work with and to build up. We don't want to start out with a cylinder that has 18 to 30 something sides that's too many vertices to try and deal with for such a simple object. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make sure that our sides is set to 8. Now with that set, what we can do is go ahead and right click, convert that to editable poly, and now we can access the sub-object modes of that object. Now before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and hold down Alt and the middle mouse button and orbit around my cylinder, and you'll notice that it's not quite even with that surface. The auto grid does a pretty good job, but it's not always perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate this a little bit till it's almost even with the surface. We don't have to be absolutely perfect. And then if you want, we can actually go ahead and lower that down into the surface itself. Now before we get started, let's go ahead and go to polygon mode and let's orbit underneath. So hold down Alt and the middle mouse button and you should be able to see that bottom polygon. Go ahead and left click on that and then hit delete as it's inside of that object and it's not necessary. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll select this top polygon. With that polygon selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, start shaping this out. So let's use inset to create a little bit of a rim and this is going to be the base of our button. Okay, So we'll set this to something around, um, let's go ahead and do something like 0.25 and we'll try typing that in there. Sometimes my number key doesn't want to work all the time so we'll just kinda try that again. Let's actually just bump that down. 
get it as close as possible. There we go. And we'll hit OK on that. Now what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to round off this edge. Now you might be looking at this and saying, well, this is very jagged. It's, it's not really a round button. How are we going to smooth that out? Well, I'm going to show you how to smooth that out very quickly, but we're not quite there yet. So double click on that edge, and you'll notice that it selects that loop all the way around the top. This is the exact same thing as to selecting one edge and coming over here to your selection rollout and hitting loop. So with that set, let's go ahead and use the chamfer tool. So go ahead and click on your settings, and you'll notice that it appears as though it has removed one of our edges. But actually what's happened is it's chamfered it too much. So let's take our chamfer amount down, and let's go to something like 0.1. Let's also add in another segment there to kind of help round that off. Now we could also come in and we could raise that chamfer amount a little bit more just to kind of round that off a little bit. So let's do 0.25 instead. There we go, that looks good. And we'll hit OK on that. So now that we have that set, let's go ahead and create the actual button. To do that, let's go to polygon mode, hitting 4 on the keyboard. And let me actually get it away from that edge just a little bit. Let's grab our scale tool and scale that in on the X and Y and bring that in some. All right, great. Now let's extrude this and we're going to extrude that up, but let's lower that amount. Let's do something like 0.5. I think that might give us a good value. Hit OK on that. And then we're going to inset this polygon one time by 0.25 and we'll hit OK. Go to edge mode, hitting 2 on the keyboard and double click on this edge. With that selected, let's go ahead and use chamfer. And let's take that chamfer amount down. Let's do 0.1 in this case. Hit OK on that, and there we go. Let's go to polygon mode one more time. So we're going to hit 4 on the keyboard. Select that polygon, and then what we'll do is we'll actually grab our move tool and just pull that down in the Z direction. And that's going to give us a little bit of a lip inside of that button. Let's inset it one more time and hit OK. So there we go. So now we have our button. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and separate out the actual button from the base of the button itself. This can be done very easily by going to polygon mode and then coming up to your selection rollout and hitting grow. Continue to hit grow until you get down to the bottom edge of that button. Now with these polygons selected, what we can do is we can scroll down to our edit geometry rollout and we're going to use detach. This is going to be the opposite of attach. So if we hit detach, it's going to ask us if we wanted to make this a whole new object, or do we want to detach it to the element, or do we want to detach it as a clone? In this case, we're going to make it its own object. So we're going to say button and hit enter. So now we have two objects, okay, and they're separate from one another. Now I've done this for a very specific reason, and we'll talk about it here in just a little while. So now that we have our buttons, let's go ahead and select both of those and I'm going to hold down shift and drag that down and we're going to go ahead and continue to make this an instance and we'll hit OK. We always want to make sure that we make those instances until we know absolutely certain that we're finished with modeling those. So select those two. You can do that by holding down control, remember to append your selections and then hold shift and drag that out with the move tool again to create those duplicates. Now let's just select this one. Go to your top view and also turn off this realistic uh, view mode and go to shaded so that way it's a little bit easier to see it gets rid of that shadow now let's hold down shift let's drag this out to where it's centered up between these buttons let's hit OK on that and there we go let's go back to perspective you could also hit P on the keyboard to do that let's hit Z to zoom in on the selected object and there we go hold down control to select all of those buttons and let's push those over toward the edge just a little bit so there we go, just kind of move that out of the way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about smoothing in our next lesson because these are very angular and they don't really match up the rest of the style of our arcade cabinet. So we'll get started with that next.